Justice Part 1. Now, guys, this is a what if that I actually like the idea of a lot. This is not a request. I made this on my own. And I just like this what if a lot. Now, lately, I've been doing a lot of just Young Justice what ifs. Now, I will be doing Young Justice what ifs, DC what ifs. Still be doing My Academia what ifs because that's what started me off. But I'll be doing what ifs on a couple other TV shows and anime. Because I already did, I'm already doing one on Invincible. So after this video, I'll be uploading at least seven or six what ifs. Then after those six or seven what ifs, I will be uploading, a, I will be uploading a custom video, two custom video reviews. Also, will be uploading a action figure collection video, and I also will be uploading a stop motion. Now, stop motion might take time because I'm. Okay with stop motion, but I just don't. I feel like my setup isn't really that good for making a quick what a quick stop motion, and I'm at least trying to make my stop motion at least like seven ten minutes long. But yeah, so let's get right into the what if. Now it's probably not even gonna be a stop motion, but it's probably gonna be like some sort of action figure comedy. That's some sort of movie type of you know a movie action figure comedy whatever. So basically, guys, let's get started. Now this is what if. Ben 10 was in Young Justice Part 1. Now, guys, I've been thinking about it, and I don't know if I should start at Season 1 or Season 2, but I wanted to start at Season 2 because I feel like that was when the Hive was, like, really taking over. The Hive, a.k.a. the alien species that made the Blue Beetle. Now, basically, in this universe, Ben 10 is going to be kind of... Uh, ben Tennyson, or Ben 10 is going to be kind of OP. Ain't going to be too OP, so it make the story a little bit more interesting, because I don't want him to be like a powerhouse in the Young Justice universe. Now, guys, in all the Young Justice events that happened that don't involve Ben 10, I'm not going to be, you know, mentioning those at all. If you've seen it, if you've seen the what those episodes I'm going to be basing this part one off, you could just say it. But yeah, so basically I'll be, I'll be putting in two episodes in each video. Of this part of the series. Now, I actually might be canceling what if the Ninja Turtles were in Young Justice. If you guys don't want to see that anymore, I can just cancel it. Maybe delete it off my page. Don't know. But yeah, so guys, I hope you guys enjoy this video a lot and let's get started. Episode 1 of Season 2 of Young Justice. Now, guys, um, I actually stopped. I'm gonna actually stop that right now. I'm gonna be starting. Yeah, so Season 2 of Episode. Yeah, Season. To episode one, yeah. So we start our story off at the beginning of episode one of season two of Young Justice. Now, basically, after Savage pretty much controlled the Justice League and all those hours of their day were gone, some main Justice Leaguers weren't found and their time weren't accounted for. Now, as I'm really going to be introducing to Ben 10, but we do switch back on. Well, Galvin, Galvin Prime, and Martian Manchester actually went to Galvin Prime for a device that that Asmuth had. If you, if you know Asmuth, you know Asmuth. If you don't know about Ben Ten, you should have never clicked on this video. But if you don't, let me just do a little recheck. Asmuth is basically the person that made the Omnitrix. Basically, Martian Manchester arrives at Galvin, and they try to use technology on Martian Manchester. They succeed a little bit using. Laser blast and all, but you know, pretty much, much manager phases through it. But Gal, but Galvin's you know every species of alien, and they know fire is a big weakness towards Martians or green Martians. So basically, they make um they basically take down a very technol a very high technology grade kind kind of like a glorified flamethrower and basically torch the ever living. Um, well, wife out of, you know, Martian Manager. Martian Manager doesn't die or is too weak, isn't too weak to leave. Martian Manager leaves, but in that old tire event of that Martian, you know, destroying buildings on top of buildings of, you know, Galvin's, um, pretty much Asmuth sees this as, you know, kind of a disability because some alien races know about the Omnitrix. And they know that Galvin Prime holds it. So he wants to take pit the Omnitrix away before any other highly or any other, you know, extremely powerful alien species comes here to get the Omnitrix. So, the Azimuth sends the Omnitrix to Earth, and he finds a suitable target for it. A 10-year-old 
a teenager, uh, what was it? No, he finds a suitable target for it. He finds a 16-year-old boy that is on a Plumber Academy. Now, Ace of Miss Universe, Ben 10 actually did not get the Omnitrix when he was 10. He got the Omnitrix when he was about 16. Now, basically, Ben is actually going to be a sort of like a a watered-down um, Pyro Knight. I don't know what it's called. Uh, he has the powers of Gwen, but they're like super watered-down to a point where they're so weak that he can barely stop a bullet. So, his powers are mainly focused on moving objects towards him or making, you know, shurikens to cut through flesh like a peck and knife or something like that. So, the the most damage Ben can do with his power is to probably make, like, some sort of energy knife or energy sword. But the swords are pretty brittle towards other swords or middle. So, his, his gift is only really used on messing with technology or trying to use his, you know, powers to... Guide him, guide his, you know, energy through technology to control it. But he could barely stop a bullet, and stopping a whole entire grenade or something like that is pretty, you know, tiring towards him. So basically, he barely uses his his powers because they're pretty weak, and they're they barely even do anything. So they're basically not even real power though, because they're so weak. Compare, like literally, Robin could probably take down. Ben, if Ben didn't have any combat training and just had his powers. Now, Ben has combat training near the same combat training as. Mm, about the same combat training as Robin on his first year of being Robin. Now, basically, Ben has a lot of training and pretty much knows about um, two martial arts and knows how to shoot a blaster with pretty good aim. And pretty much. Ben has perfect aim. That's really one of the things that sent him over the edge with his power. Ben has perfect aim. I mean, like, straight up green arrow, dead shot, red hood type of aim. Like, he has, he never misses. So that's literally one of the key factors on Ben. So basically, Ben is targeted for the Omnitrix. Because in this universe, Ben is the relative of a very powerful plumber user. Now basically, in this universe... Ben is actually the um what was it the great great grandson of um what was it of Max I don't know what his name is. Uncle Max Uncle yeah Uncle Max Max I don't know basically Max is Ben's like his great his great great grandson Max actually was pretty you know powerful human and Max was actually Part of the was a pretty good part. I know the Justice League does not know about the Plumber Academy, and they haven't known since it started because the Justice League weren't together when the Plumber Academy started. And the Plumber Academy never really focused itself with Superman, but they always had a vault that was cursed and led and filled to the grim kryptonite. And also, they find out they found out that um, what was it in this universe? Chromostone's race, or Chromostone, basically Chromostone is basically just Diamond Head's Jesus. If you don't know Diamond Head, he's an alien from the Omnitrix. His species, basically to them, Chromostone's like their alien Jesus. So basically, um, you should know this by now, or if you've seen a lot of Benton videos, that Omnitrix, uh, the alien doesn't have to have a whole entire species or a planet. The alien just has to be a different creature and be smart enough to inhabit you know, Ben's brain as he transforms into it. So, Ben gets the Omnitrix about one time when he's on a trip to a planet named, to a planet on Mars. Now, he's on Mars right now, basically, ser searching for Martian remains and all this other stuff. But eventually, he sees a meteorite land straight on Mars. Now, Aspen sent it towards Earth, but not to Earth, trying to find... The DNA sample that matched with, you know, Ben Ten Max Tennyson's, you know, great great grandson. Now Max Tennyson's great great grandson did come the did come to um I don't know, what was it, Galvin Prime once, and that was basically it. And he never met Asmuth there as well. But Asmuth did look at him and see that he'd be a pretty good host for the Omnitrix because he was highly trained and he had a lot of willpower and he could probably become a great hero. And bring peace upon the universe because Deku was um, Ben was more of a peacemaker than an actual fighter, but he did fight 
really good. So, Ben looked at the Omnitrix, and the Meteorite flew right towards him. Before it can touch him, the Meteorite lost a little bit of, you know, what was it? I think it was kinetic energy, and then the tube, or the Meteorite that was inhabiting the Omnitrix, or that the Omnitrix was inhabiting, Basically, the meteorite opened up and the Omnitrix landed straight on Ben's wrist. Now, Ben was in a spacesuit, but the Omnitrix actually disintegrated his left arm of his spacesuit so the Omnitrix would stick to his, you know, flesh wrist. So it would stick to his wrist and he was pushed down into the ground. They took him out, of, they took him back to the ship because his, you know, his spaceship, I mean, no, his outfit was pretty much broken and he, if he stayed on Mars a little bit longer than you know, a couple minutes, he would actually start to get bad injuries. Now, Ben, since he is half alien, or 1% alien, he can survive on other planets for at least a good 10 minutes before he starts getting side, side pretty much before he starts getting, you know, side effects of how a human would react if they were plopped on Earth, on the, if they were plopped on the surface of the sun, or on, you know, the moon, without any, well... About any, and I mean, without none of the cautious measures or the spaceship. I mean, the space clothes or the space suit. So basically, Ben gets the Omnitrix that, that way. And we see him about a couple months later. And Ben is, you know, basically a, you know, pretty used with the Omnitrix. Now, Ben, be ben is actually thinking about becoming a hero now. Pretty much, Plumber Academy do think this is an okay idea because they could make a name for themselves. Not really a name for themselves to make Ben sort of like a hero. So Ben tries to become a hero. Now at this point, Ben becomes a hero for about um half a month or like two or three weeks. And Ben gets seen by the Justice League. The Justice League sees Ben's talents and the Omnitrix. Now none of the people on the... No, no, none of the people... On the ship, except Superman, know about the Omnitrix. Now, the Omnitrix was actually helped by Kryptonians. Kryptonians actually helped with the design of the Omnitrix, just one percent of it. So basically, they so basically the Omnitrix, since it was made by, you know, Krypton Kryptonians, like you know Galvans, the Omnitrix holds all of the DNA of every alien species in the DC universe. Meaning Martians, Kryptonians, New Gods, because they are technically different from humans, and they are technically kind of, you know, in the category of aliens, and also metahumans, so Ben can transform into a speedster, because um, metahumans are different from humans enough to be classified as a different transformation, and basically, yeah, so it's a pretty good, you know, setup, so... We skip all the way to season. We skip about at New Year's. Now, Ben is a pretty good known hero in certain parts of the certain parts of Gotham, and also mainly you know spotted in Metropolis the most of the time, and did encounter Superman then and there. Now, Ben has all the aliens from the 2000s TV show The Beginning, so Ben has every alien all the way up to the Omniverse. You know, point. So basically, Ben has every alien to the Omniverse TV show. So Ben has every Omni every alien transformation that Ben ever was shown to use, all up until you know that that mistake of a reboot. So yeah. So basically, Ben is pretty OP. He has all the Omnitrix transformations that he had in Omniverse, all the way up to the two thousands. Ben 10 TV show the first one. So we skip all the way to where Black where Lagoon Boy is basically fighting Nightwing. So they're going back to back, pretty much training, and we skip all the way to pretty much Metropolis. And Metrop and pretty much when Ben's about to flee from the scene from him defeating let's say him defeating Parasite. He's about to leave, but when he gets stopped by Superman, Superman stops him and basically gives him the opportunity to join the Young Justice. Or to join the covert team called Young Justice. So Ben does look through it and 
is given some sort of waiver type of thing that Beast Boy made. Basically, Beast Boy making, you know, puns thing that they're saying that is a great place for teenage heroes, blah, blah, blah. So Ben takes him on his offer and goes to the cave. Now, Ben, ben is teleported to the cave about the same time when... After all the, um, you know, stuff that happened... After all the um, Young Justice memories are settled in, and when Robin is talking to Nightwing about how they pick Clayface back into Arkham Asylum, after them t defeating Clayface in the beginning of the episode, basically Ben shows up in the t in the boom tube. They're all on defense, but basically Superman's right next to, you know, Ben. Basically, Superman explains to the Young Justice that this is your new recruit. Is this your new recruit, Ben Tennyson? Now, basically. Nightwing says, I heard about you in the news. And also, Beast Boy yells out, Ben Tennyson. Basically, he walking up to him and said, You're the Omni Hero, right? Now, basically, Ben Ten made the Omni. What was it? Omni Man. No, it was Omni Boy. That was basically his hero name, Omni Boy. Like, Omni Tricks. But, like, you know, just boy after it. So, basically, Ben said, Yeah, I'm supposed to be your new recruit. So, basically, Nightwing says, Let's see what you got. So basically, they clear out the room, and they start training. Ben transforms into Ditto, and splits himself into pretty much four copies. He fr he pretty much what was it? he sprints at full speeds towards Nightwing. Nightwing starts taking out his clones with easy precision, and basically taking out with minimum effort. He starts making clones on top of clones on top of clones, eventually making about thirty or sixty clones. Basically mauling and overpowering Nightwing. Nightwing kicks out one of his tasers and pretty much shocks all of the dittos. And all the dittos for the same pain. The dittos pretty much, you know, step back and Ben sees this is not working. So he transforms into some sort of alien that has more strength than Nightwing can dish out. So he transforms into Chromastone. Ben starts shooting fire blasts and laser beams. At Nightwing. Nightwing starts dodging them multiple times over and over, but eventually gets hit one time in the stomach by him. Now, Ben wasn't shooting lethally, he was shooting numbly. So, you know, it was kind of like a light, like, type of punch, like how Cyclops' powers work because he makes, he shoots out kinetic energy instead of laser beams. So, Ben pretty much knocks out Nightwing into the wall. Nightwing is nearly knocked out, basically him being pretty injured. Now, you know, Beast Boy claps and says, that was really good, and Ben detransforms. Ben sees that everybody you know is pretty excited, is pretty, you know, impressed by his new, by his strength, and Superman's all, Superboy is already gone because he was already hitting the showers, and pretty much Blue Beetle says, you know, Blue Beetle was already leaving, and he didn't really see the fight, so he told, you know, Beast Boy to hurry up and get in the showers because he smells like shred up doo-doo water because he was in the sewers fighting Clayface. He wasn't really fighting Clayface, he was a crocodile when he was swimming through the sewers. And he smells like straight doo-doo water, so he needs to get in the showers right, right now. Or you're gonna sneak, so you're gonna stink up the whole cave. So, you know, they get, they go into the showers. Basically, after that, Ben gets settled a little bit, getting sort of like a dorm, like a room in the cave. Now, Ben was living in some sort of penthouse near Plumber Academy, and basically he moved out of his penthouse because he wanted to live near Teenage Heroes and become more, more incised or more, you know, deeper into hero, heroing. So, yeah. All right when Ben is about to get settled, basically the team gets called by... Captain Adam about a, about some sort of, what was it, some sort of alert at the, what was it, I don't know what building was called again, they get called to New York into a building, I don't know where that building is called, it's a building where they have all of the uh, flags of the states, all, like across all of them, or the countries, I don't know what they're called, but yeah, they have all the flags, I don't remember the name of that building, I actually do not, Constitution Building, I think. I probably I'm probably wrong. I'm most likely I'm wrong, but yeah. So they see an alert there, and they go there to New York City, and basically they see that this is pretty much an okay opportunity. And basically, Nightwing sees that Ben has pretty good control and pretty good fighting skills, 
So he, you know, takes Ben on the same mission with him to, you know, the building. So they switch back to the Constitution building before they get there, and they see Lobo has arrived. Lobo is taking down all the three officers that were trying to stop him, and basically, you know, he jumps in there pretty quickly. Now, basically, Lobo is technically an alien, so Ben can transform into him. Now, Ben will get all transformations in the DC Universe eventually, but now the only DC transformation Ben has is Martian DNA and Kryptonian DNA. But he doesn't know how to use Kryptonian DNA that well because, you know, when he transforms into Kryptonian, his hearing goes out of whack and he can't really focus that much. But he has had training with Wild Mutt's hearing, so he thinks he's good enough for Kryptonian DNA. So basically, when Lobo steps in and tries to grab the senator or whatever, the, the, the alien, the alien, um, senator, basically he was an alien. Now, basically they take, they take his, what you call it, they take, pretty much Lobo shows up. When Lobo shows up, basically he gets stopped by Batgirl and with Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl and Batgirl show up at the same time before Lobo's about to kill the senator. And, or the, what was it, the man, don't know his name, basically, the Batgirl and Wonder Girl start, you know, pretty much fighting him. Batgirl tries to take the senator or the man out of, you know, harm's way, and Ben is still with the Justice League as this is happening. So, Batgirl and, basically, Wonder Girl, um, you know, Wonder Girl, Wonder Girl are basically, you know, fighting Lobo for a pretty good amount of time. So basically, after Lobo straight up fold, I mean, like straight up fold Wonder Girl and Batgirl, because they had no chance in the in the beginning against Lobo. They had literally no chance because Lobo way too OP to be taken down by I don't know Wonder Girl and Batgirl. They're basically to me, uh, they're more of scared characters because I don't really, I don't really, you know care for Wonder Girl or Batgirl, because their origin stories are pretty, you know, simple. And they, pretty much when Lobo opens up the senator or, like, rips him apart, it's an alien there. So the senator was an alien in, an alien in a, well, a bio suit, or some sort of suit built to act and move and look like an alien. So basically, Lobo takes the alien and rides off in his ship, all the way to Kingdom Come or whatever he was flying to. Now after, you know, Lobo gets away, we could switch to a pretty much talk by G. Gordon. Now basically, I freaking hate this guy, G. Gordon. I hate him. I freaking hate him. I want to punch him straight in his ugly mug because he sound like straight up doodle water, bro. I just want to, I just want to punch him, bro. Basically, he's mainly just a copy and paste of you know, what was it, copy and paste of, I think it was Jim Gordon, or the guy that pretty much hates on Spider-Man, basically just a copycat of him, but he just hates on everybody in DC, so, yeah, and we can switch to the Justice League talking about how Lobo and the alien that was in the secretary, because now I know is what it was the secretary, basically, uh, that was a Crotean. And Crotans, they explained that they always travel in packs, so it's more on Earth. And they're basically trying, they most likely are trying to, you know, pretty much hide something, or they have some sort of hives around the Earth. After the boom tube explanation from Adam Strange in this universe, basically he explains about the boom tubes and how um, Crotans' whole entire culture is built all in stolen tech. And also Kroatians, and also they introduce and they talk about a little bit about Galvins. Now, basically in this universe, Galvins and Kroatians actually have been going on an ongoing war, and Kroatians are actually very, very, very like different from. They're basically like, like they're kind of like clones or like unofficial or basically inferior versions of Galvins, kind of like how. Daxums and Kryptonians are. After Doc, after Adam Strange, pretty much explains about how all Justice Leaguers are prohibited by 
going to Ram, aka the planet he was talking about, about the Boom Dooms. Basically, he's t he tells them all that Ram is basically not letting any Justice Leaguers, including Batman, especially Superman, and also the other Justice Leaguers ever, from ever spanning foot or coming near their planet. And they're also fugitives. And mainly the ch the for the mainly the main Justice Leaguers like Flash, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Green Lantern, all those others. Basically, they're the main fugitives. So yeah. So basically, you know, Nightwing says that I want to send a, not all of us are Justice Leaguers, and I want to be sending a team of some troops or some of my, you know, what was it partners or my, you know, what was it colleagues or my partners or whatever. To go to Ram and you know search there. So basically, we switch and we skip a little bit to basically after Nightwing comes back to the cave and gives everybody their you know missions or their betas or alphas or omegas. Basically, Ben is actually teamed up with Tim Drake's Robin, Lagoon Boy, and Blue Beetle, just like um you know. So basically, Nightwing was thinking about taking Ben with him for the Omega, but he thinks that, you know, Ben needs a little bit more practice in his eyes to become more, you know, of a outstanding member. Ben, Nightwing has taken into, you know, account that Ben has been him the first day that he got here, but he still doesn't have enough training or skill in his human form. And Ben was, and Ben did tell Nightwing about the whole entire timeout thing and his energy uh, preserve on an Omnitrix. So basically, you know, Nightwing sends Ben with a good boy, Tim Drake Robin, and Blue Beetle. And this would, give de this would give Ben the opportunity to scan, you know, what was it, Atlantean DNA from the Goon Boy and also, you know, Blue Beetle's DNA and become a Blue Beetle or, you know, a Scarab. So pretty much, Nightwing pretty much explains to them that you are Gamma. And beta, no. Yeah, Gamma. So Beta is sent to, what was it? So Beta is the rest of the team, and basically everybody you know is sent to their, you know, areas. So, so before, when Ben, Lagoon Boy, and Blue Beetle leave, after, you know, Lagoon Boy saying that Beta, Gamma is always given the weak, or like the, you know, Beta is how. Oh, Gamma is always given the weak or stupid jobs. And now, pretty much before t Tim leaves, Dick stops Tim and pretty much tells him that you're the leader of Gamma. And also, keep an eye on Ben. I want, I want you to tell me how he does in this situation. Because we never really seen him do a cold heart mission. We only seen him do flashy missions like taking down Superman villains and Gotham. You know, stuff. So, Tim says, yeah, but I never led a team before, blah, 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 pretty much having the same conversation that I did in canon, and, you know, they skip all the way to their side of the mission. Gamma shows up at pretty much New York, New Orleans at a, at a, like, what was it, at a garbage place, don't know where it is, but they show up there, and Ben, pretty much when they show up, Ben's Omnitrix starts going haywire. You know, Lagoon Boy is saying, what is that? And basically, he says, Omnitrix, it gives me, you know, my abilities. And also, it's alien technology. And the Scarab starts going crazy as well, looking at the Omnitrix and pretty much Blue Beetle's arm charging up with, you know, energy. Pretty much saying to put that thing away. So, Ben, the Omnitrix pretty much transforms into a Scarab in the same time as, you know, Blue, Blue Beetle is about to shoot at Ben. And Ben transforms into a blue beetle, a green beetle. Now, Ben and pretty much the scarab calms down for some reason. And pretty much, um, what was it? Basically, blue beetle says, a mono. You can transform into, basically, Ben explains to everybody that the Omnitrix allows me to transform into any alien DNA. Any creature that's different from human DNA or animal earth DNA. Kind of like how I can transform technically into an Atlantean or a metahuman. So basically, Ben detransforms and says that's a pretty good transformation. Now basically, they arrive there and they're in their cloaked ship. Basically, uh, 
pretty much everybody, they are in sh they are in pretty much place, and they jump down, and they see the tool shed. Blue Beetle shoots a beam at the tool shed, but they see that the it's just a tool shed. Robin calls back to base and says, "It's no slated, it's no alien, or it's no aliens here. It's no slated beams or nothing." And basically, you know, the man says, "It's still traces of Zeta beam energy there." So, you know, Robin rescans and says, "It's is under the, well, the the water level or the water um under the water." So basically. You know, Lagoon Boy's up. Now, Blue, now what was it? Benton actually transforms into... Basically, Rip Jaws, Ben, and... Um, what was it? Lagoon Boy show down there, and they see that, you know, it's an opening down there in the ocean. And they see that, you know, it's the only technology. So, they send in for Blue Beetle and Robin to show up. And pretty much they, you know, f swim right into it. They swim right into there. And they're doing, you know, pre they're doing it pretty stealthily. Ro bat, you know, what was it, Ben still in Rip Charles form on land. Basically, they show up there and they see it's a whole entire nest. And I mean, like, a whole entire fleet. Uh, like, a whole entire, you know, base of operations for the Croatians. Ben, Ben's Omnitrix goes pretty much, not haywire, but scans around. Silently, not making a laser beam like type of white just scans around silently and says um Crotain DNA scanned. Basically Ben sees that is a new silhouette in his Omnitrix seen as Crotain Omni is Crotain DNA next to his new Blue Beetle transformation seen that you know this is pretty good. So Ben, Robin, a goon boy and Blue Beetle pretty much stealthily hide and pretty much and they, you know, are pretty much calling into base saying that, you know, they found a whole entire nest of these things. It's a whole entire base. So, they call back to base and Robin pretty much has told that it's good job. But, until then, lay low. We'll send a, we'll send a group there. Basically, Robin, you know, is interrupted by Ben, the goon boy, and, you know, Blue Beetle saying that that's not a good idea. And it's probably not going to work because we've been spotted. So, basically, they start getting ambushed, and Robin says to leave immediately and get out of here. We get switched back, back to, what was it? Um, I think it was, we get switched back to the cave, and pretty much all the Justice Thinkers are called in, or like, uh, what was it, the uh, Young Justice is calling in, and pretty much they all are told the same thing, that, you know, there's no real nest or fleet of these Crotanes here. But... They do ask about Beta, and they all do ask about Gamma, and they do get told that, you know, well, they found a whole entire buttload of these things. A whole entire base operations, like a whole entire freaking nest of these things. So they st so basically we switch back to Tim, Blue Beetle, and Lagoon Boy are all, you know, trying to run for the lives because all of the Crotanes have spotted them and are coming after them. Robin gets ready and says, Blue, you have our six. Ben, do whatever. Just try to get them off our toe. So Ben transforms into... And Ben was already in Rip Charles form like, at this point. So he just didn't transform into anything. He just started biting into Crotanes and scratching them in the face. Take, making them... Injuring them really badly, but not killing them. They start to fight over and over, more and more. And at this point, Ben was biting into Crotanes and pretty much chucking them into the walls. Pretty much bumping into Robin as Robin's taking down multiple Crotanes. Ben transforms into and starts burning Crotanes. Well, not burning them, just blasting them with fireballs, hitting them upside the head, pushing them into walls and pretty much buildings left and right. I mean, constructs left and right. So eventually, Ben is starting to shoot fireballs after fireballs after fireballs, and eventually the Omnitrix times out. And it's been about, let's say, it's been about. Uh, 44 minutes and his Omnitrix can go about 20 hour, 21 hours without charging but he's on normal you know capacity or energy conservances so you know Ben transforms back and pretty much starts fighting starts fighting left and right kicking or like chucking um, Crotanes into walls and punching them and pretty much taking out some you know, Plumber Tech taking on Laser Blaster and trying to shoot all of them. 
back and left. So basically, it takes about um it takes about two twenty seconds for the Alan to tie back in. It's been about twenty seconds and Ben is already, you know, taking out a pretty good amount of proteins, but he's about but he pretty much gets overloaded or like overran and overpowered by a bunch of a bunch of proteins that are basically clawing at him and Ben tries to get them off of him. But Ben touches the Omnitrix as it times in and transforms randomly into into his Martian transformation, transforms into his Martian transformation and phases through the Croteans, shooting pretty much projectiles or sh pretty much elongating his arms, making them, you know, Mr. Fantastic type arms, basically swinging them towards Croteans, slapping Croteans into walls and constructs over and over again. Eventually, they get overpowered and overran, but Ben is actually a big heavy hitter in this whole entire Croteans army. So Ben. It's actually, if he went a little bit better and, like, choose a Kryptonian DNA, he could possibly take down all these Kryptonians at once, or, like, pretty much faster than the rest of the team could. But Ben was already pushing his limits because he was using a lot of shape shifting and pretty much tiring himself out, making himself into alien creatures, also shaping his body into a Superman clone or copy, basically punching, you know, multiple Croteans into the, you know, chest. Pretty much been flying around in his Martian form, flying or phasing through, you know, constructs, pretty much scaring the ever, scaring the life out of Croteans. Pretty much, you know, phasing right in front of them as they're running away. So, the Croteans start leaving, leaving when they see Martian Manhunter, or like, been in his Martian form, next to, well, you know, what we call it, um, next to, you know, Blue Beetle. Now, Ben flies towards them and basically goes into the native form that the Martians take. The normal, this is the basically the transformation the Martians take that, you know, are actually their true form. So Ben flies and basically, you know, he lets loose and he transforms into the alien transformation that, you know, is technically how the uh, Omnitrix you know, takes their, you know, native transformation, their normal transformation that the, you know, the true transformation that Martians take. So basically, you know, Martian Man starts flying, that Ben starts flying towards the, you know, what was it, the Croatians as they're fleeing away after seeing Blue Beetle, and basically Martian Manager starts fighting them, but he gets stopped by, you know, Pretty much Blue Beetle saying, what did he say? Pretty much Ben saying, I think he said he's going to, what was it, self-destruct, basically. You know, pretty much Ben, I mean, no, Tim and Lagoon Boy are confused because in this universe, um, Ben's pretty much, what was it, Ben's basically his, um, I think it was his translator for Alien, um, what was it, Alien pretty much tra a alien sp speeches or English, uh, pretty much, what was it, Spe speeches or, you know, talking or their languages. Basically, Ben's translator is half of the time always on, but most of the time probably off, but this time it was on and he did understand what they were saying. And basically, they about to get out because, well, the base was about to self-destruct in four minutes. So Ben tries to think if he can stop it by transforming into Upgrade. But he, pretty much Ben and Tim are taking it and saying, you know, you had to get out of here as fast as possible. So Ben basically spins off in his Martian form, basically saying we gotta get out of here. So basically Tim or uh, a goon boy pretty much gets stopped by, pretty much what was it, by Ben saying that, you know, he says something about, uh, sacrificing the playthings below. And basically, Robin says, so Robin stops for a second saying, the escapees, I mean the abductees, basically saying we gotta get below and get them. Basically, Mark, basically, that Ben says I got it covered for me and Lagoon Boy, basically grab Lagoon Boy and phase down to the bottom. Now they see the escapees, and basically, Mar basically Ben was in, still in his, you know, true Martian form. Basically, they were kind of scared, saying aliens. Basically, 
then he transforms into a a more pleasing looking Martian, and they see a Martian manager, and pretty much Ben says, "No, I'm a Martian, but I'm not him." So basically, Blue Beetle and Nightwing t get there the same the same way they got there before going down the slide. Or going down the tubes that the Croatans are taking upwards. So yeah. Basically after Lagoon Boy opens up the what was it? Opens up the cage where the, you know, escape the Dugsies are. They see that, you know, they pretty much are kind of scared of Lagoon Boy because he does look like a you know alien. But basically they say sorry after Lagoon Boy opens up the cage for them. Basically he says, I no no sweat, chum. Basically they Get ready, and basically Blue Beetle is told by the Croatan that you can stop this, and or like, get us out of here. So basically, he says, well, do it then. So they do it, and basically they get out of it, but Ben sees some of the escapees are kind of behind. So Ben grabs them and phases them, and flies towards, you know, the rest of the group faster so they can get to safety. And the base blows up. Basically, it goes on the smithereens. After the rest of the group escapes, they see that the... What was it? The rest of the Justice League shows up. Red Tornado, Superman, Hawkman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, everybody. The whole entire Justice League shows up. Like, the whole entire Justice League. I mean, like, the whole entire Justice League. Flash, Batman, Aquaman, the Adam, even. So, yeah. The rest of the group shows up, a.k.a. Sir Boy's dog, Nightwing, Wonder Girl, Blue... What was it? B? I don't know, Bumblebee, and also Batgirl. Nightwing congratulates Tim on how, you know, where to get your feet wet, and basically gets, you know, they pretty much, well, they get ready. We switch back to Ran, or whatever, this the planet where, um, what was it, Adam Strange is at, and we see that Beast Boy, Supergirl, and Martian Girl pretty much show up at Ran, with Adam Strange. Now, basically, episode 2 was mainly about Adam Strange and Beast Boy and Spirit Girl and Martian Manhunter. I mean, Martian Girl. But, I'm actually going to leave it off here, guys. And, no, I'm not going to leave it off here. I'm going to leave it off here, guys, because it's been about four, 42 minutes. And, I actually thought, you know, I didn't know season 2's episodes were so long. But, actually, guys... I said I was always going to do two episodes and one on each part, so I can't really go back to my talking. So I'm going to be doing episode three, because I'm pretty sure episode three I'll be able to introduce Benton. Because I should actually pin him with Beast Boy and Supergirl, but I wanted to see how the Croatans would deal with Ben and all that other stuff. So yeah. We start our story, see, episode three. We start our first story with Blue Beetle. And Bumblebee showing up at a cafe diner where they're recognized by the cafe owner or the man that was working there. And he basically spins off just doing some alien type of acrobatics out of the building. Basically running down the alleyway out of the back of the diner. And the man is running faster and faster. But another man that looks just like him, aka the real man, the human one, basically sucker punches the Croatian. Um, copy of the man, and basically the Crotarian jumps out of the man after its stomach opens up, whatever. Crotarian jumps out of the man, and pretty much starts speaking in slang or in his native tongue. So, the Crotarian escapes, basically getting injured by a bumblebee shooting a, a laser beam at the shoulder of the Cro, the, the shoulder of the Crotarian. The Crotarian escapes, and basically they get they all get covered in. What was it? Ashes? Because the Crotane gets in some sort of ship or some sort of thing and it gives off a lot of fire. So all of them are covered in, you know, ashes and some sort of oil or something. And basically, you know, Blue Beetle tries to scan for it, but like, he sees that it's gone. So Blue Beetle actually calls up Ben and asks for a little bit of help. So Ben, at this point, was like, what was I think Ben was in the cave at this point, basically doing a little bit of gaming with the Beast Boy. We see later that the Crotane flies, or pretty much takes a ship to a, a marine or a submarine where Aqua Lad and also, um, 
what was it, I think, Black Manta is holding him. I mean, Black Manta is at. After, pretty much, uh, what was it, after that whole entire event, pretty much Beast Boy, Martian Girl, Superboy, Adam Strange, and basically they show up there, they have the same conversation like in canon with the, um, you know, Justice League or with Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and, uh, what was it, Adam, or Dr. Adam, don't know what his name is. Basically, at this point, they're interrogating the, what was it, interrogating the, um, I think it was the Croatian and Martian girl, Batgirl, and Super Boy are there watching it. Basically, the just wonder pretty much the Batgirl, a Batman, explains to Martian girl that your uncle Martian Man has been trying to interrogate this Croatian that that Beast Boy that I mean Blue Beetle, uh, Lagoon Boy, Ben, and also. Robin acquired, and basically, you know, the pretty much it took weeks for him to even make psychic connections with the Croatian for your uncle. Basically, Martian, you know, gr Martian girl basically says, you know, fake that in her mind, and basically, straight up just goes haywire in this Croatian's brain, making the Croatian drool and basically become, whoa, whoa, numb. Basically, him falling down into the chair. Now, basically, you know, Martian Girl gives the exact coordinates where the rendezvous, the rendezvous point where the main Croatians are teleporting to planet to planet because mainly they did destroy all of their Zeta beams to Ran and Earth. So, the rendezvous, the rendezvous point was the only way Croatian could teleport to Ran and to Earth or around Earth at the same time. So, basically, you know, we get skipped to Aqua. We get skipped to the ship arriving at the rendezvous, rendezvous point where Marsha Girl just explained, seeing that the same ship that picked up the, the same ship that the Crote in the beginning flew to, or I mean, f swam to in his ship, basically, you know, it came to the rendezvous, rendezvous point. And we discovered the black manta that was on the ship where the protein fled to was actually, was actually, well, Aqualad in disguise in his father's suit. Or not only in disguise, just in his father's suit. Basically, you know, after that whole entire event, well, we get skipped, we get skipped or we get switched back to. Basically, we get skipped back to Batgirl. Robin and Batman and Nightwing, Aqualad, I mean Aquaman and Lagoon Boy at the rendezvous, the rendezvous point that, you know, Martian Girl just discovered, basically, them, them also taking Ben with them. Ben being there for, you know, extra, extra backup or extra power if you're ever spotted or, you know, ambushed. So Ben... Go, pretty much goes in the same, uh, pretty much doesn't go in the water with Aquaman and Lagoon Boy just staying in there with Batgirl and Batman and all the other people. After Nightwing, Batgirl, and Robin sneak in with Batman, and also when Lagoon Boy and Aquaman are spying on everybody by some sort of, you know, trackable camera, water camera from the surface, basically, Ben is in ghost form. It's in ghost freak form at this point. Basically, you know, being phasing and basically being invisible the whole time, basically making a stealth levels go over the charts. Now in this universe, um, ghost freaks um species doesn't give off re heat radi heat um, you know, doesn't give off heat. So basically, they're basically invisible towards you know motion sensors because he's he's phasing me at all. Pretty much motions coming away from his body. Also, he's invisible. And also, he can't be seen by, um, what was it? Heat signatures. So, he's basically truly invisible. So, you know, Ghost Freak is basically phasing around, following after, you know, Ghost, I mean, what was it, Nightwing, and everybody else. 
pretty much start phasing around. But Uncle Lad pretty much ex pretty much sees that you know the f intruders are the intruders are here. So they pretty much get you know bombarded. Now Batgirl and Nightwing and Batman take down the guards pretty quickly, and basically Aqua Aquaman and Lagoon or Lagan, whatever you want to call him, Lagan. Lagan gets blasted by laser beams from, you know, oh, Aqualad. So, before everybody, when everybody's fighting each other, and when Ghost Freak at this point was like chucking or like being still invisible, basically chucking um, villains or the henchmen into walls left and right, punching them out of nowhere, basically, and them not seeing, you know, Ghost Freak. Ghost Freak also saw the menacing black man or the menacing black figure, not black man, I don't know. Black figure sneak into the base and put some sort of bomb or some sort of technology, some sort of thing on one of the platforms. So Ghost Freak looked at it and discovered it was a bomb. Everybody else is fighting, pretty much, you know, what was it? Pretty much, you know, been just bombarded by pretty much by henchmen. Ben transforms into something a little bit more flashy, but a little bit more, you know, stronger than Ghost Freak. A little bit OP. Kryptonian DNA. Ben transforms into a, ben transforms into a Kryptonian and basically says, you're in trouble now. And flies towards all the henchmen, chucking them into walls, shooting laser beams at them, freezing them in ice with his cold breath, and punching them pretty much feet up into the air, knocking pretty much gallons of blood out of their body. Not killing them. But, you know, enough to knock him out. Now, basically, at this point, Batman did not know that Ben had Kryptonian DNA in his Omnitrix. Basically saying that's pretty useful. Now, Ben started to punch, you know, um, henchmen back and again and again and again. Flying around, shooting laser beams at them. And at this point, they were taking all of them out. It was literally none of them really left. So, Superman or Ben flies back to the... A basically bomb and tries to pull it off, but he sees that it's way too indented into the structure. He tries to hit the structure, but the bomb has some sort of security measure and basically shoots some sort of energy blast at Ben. And this energy blast was 1% kryptonite or 1% kryptonian or some sort of DNA. Basically shot Ben back with a lot of force, basically making him knock out of his kryptonian form and into his human form. Ben gets back up, basically looking around, shaking his head, saying that hurt a lot. So basically, he looks around and he sees more of the henchman about to leave, and pretty much Aqualad about to get out and dip. So Ben pretty much bangs on the Omnitrix, saying, give me something good, give me something good, pretty much slamming on the Omnitrix out of pure frustration, transforming him into... Transforms into pretty much... Oh, tra transforms into Accelerate, and basically gets a call from... Lightwing that, you know, pretty much black, uh, what was it, the target and the henchmen are trying to leave, stop them, and pretty much Ben flies, or not flies, he runs at them at full speed, getting there faster than anybody else can get there, pretty much going flash, and basically flying, pretty much, pretty much flying at full speed, not flying, but like, you know, flying through the air as he's running, basically running straight towards, you know, straight towards the man that presumably looks like, you know, Black Manta. Black Manta shoots a focus energy blast at Accelerate. Accelerate dodges it, but gets handed by a nasty left hook from, you know, Aqualad, basically getting, pretty much being off, you know, not seeing how fast Aqualad was moving, basically slaps Accelerate into a wall. Accelerate, you know, under, well, oh, basically under... Or underestimating, you know, both the guy or the target. Basically, him getting back up and seeing, and pretty much taking, pinning back down his mask and flying through the air, running around, running again and again and again at full speed towards Black Manta. Black Manta shoots a laser beam at Accelerate. Accelerate dodges it, but shoots another laser beam at Accelerate again. He dodges it again and Ben throws a nasty left hook, more or less a scratch because, you know, look at those claws. And basically scratches into the mask of Black Manta, or quote unquote Black Manta. Basically, it was Aqualad under the mask, though. Basically, Aqualad grabs Accelerate and chucks him into the water. Basically, Accelerate not really knowing how to swim. Accelerate flying, pretty much swimming towards some of the um, boats or some of the, uh, what was it? 
swimming towards the dock or like one of the bridges, pretty much clinging onto it, not knowing how to swim and accelerate for him. But before Aqua, before Aqua can leave, Superman, Wonder Girl, and a couple others show up, and basically they start fighting. Ben transforms into when he gets a hand on the Omnitrix, he transforms into Water Hazard and flies up into the air propelling himself through the air with water blast, basically shooting water blast at pretty much, what was it, robots and also um, henchmen. Seeing that Aqualad is about to leave, tries to stop them, like everybody else, but gets stopped by a bullet straight to the chest. The bullet doesn't really pierce through, you know, water, water overflows, pretty much. I don't know if it's overflow or water hazard. I'm pretty sure it's water hazard. So water hazard gets shot in the chest, but nothing really happens. It doesn't really hurt him a lot, but it does stun him enough for him to fall into the ground in pain. Basically, Aqu Aquaman and Black Lagoon, I mean, no, <laughs> Lagoon Boy basically see that, you know, they pretty much start fighting, you know, the man or what they presume to think that is um, Black Manta. They see that as well, Aqualad. Now, Nightwing did tell them that Aqualad was working with Black Manta at this point, and all of that happened in, I think, Season 1. But basically, you know, Aqual Aquaman says that I never would believe that, you know, well, what was it? Nightwing would be, tr would be real, or, like, it would be true. But I guess it is. So, basically, you know, Lagoon Boy and... Aqua Lad start fighting, and also Aquaman start fighting. But he pretty much, at this point, Ben was detransformed because it was too much pain in his, you know, pretty much over over water hazard form. Basically, him being in pain, having a nasty brown bruise on his chest where the bullet hit water hazard. So basically, at this point, Ben was at a commission. Basically, Aqua Lad. And Aquaman basically see this and say, pretty much, I didn't believe it. Aqualad says, you should have believed it. And pretty much had the same conversation like in canon. And basically had the same fight like in canon. And basically, you know, Nightwing having to choose between fighting, you know, his friend or stopping the bomb. So, pretty much, well, you know, what was it? Basically, Ben is, you know... On the floor at this point, in pure pain. Now, at this point, Wonder Girl did discover Ben and pretty much grabbed him and said, We're gonna get you in a safe, safe place, and basically flies him out of the area, landing him onto some sort of trees, basically leaving him there to rest up. So, Ben slowly fades off into sleep, and basically, after that whole entire event, everything in canon, after pretty much fighting, still happens. So, Everybody, Nightwing tells everybody to evacuate the bio ship now because it's a bomb on board. But basically, um, Tim says, I thought Ben already told you that it was a bomb on here long before, you know, you found out. So basically, Nightwing says, dang it, Ben, where is Ben? Basically, Wonder Girl calling in saying that he was out of commission and I put him somewhere safe so he couldn't get, you know, hurt in his human form. So basically, um... Nightwing says he's one. He's probably the only one that can probably get the bomb out of here without injuring anybody. So call him now. Basically, Wonder Girl flies up there, pretty much trying to wake up Ben, slapping him in the face, and Ben waking up, saying, "I'm up. I'm up." Basically, him being told by Wonder Girl to do something because the bomb is, you know, pretty much, you know, about to blow. So Ben says, "I already went in my Kryptonian form. I mean, my Kryptonian form. And I was trying to take it out." But it has some sort of slight kryptonite powering. So basically, Wonder Girl says, find another transformation that I can get it out. And Ben says, I think I know one. So he transforms into... So basically, you know, they pretty much try to get Ben in. But at this point, it's already too late. And they have to evacuate. Because Ben probably can't get in. Get there in time to stop the bomb. So Ben pretty much upgrades an alien ship that one of the... What was it? One of the... um. I don't know whether I forgot the alien species name. Um, one of the Croatans had one of the Croatan ships. He upgrades them and flies it out of here, grabbing a couple other, you know, 
heroes, aka a couple other people like Robin and stuff. So they fly off. So they fly off and they get out the ship and they get out the place as fast as possible. And now at this point, Superman was trying to save the Croatans by telling them to get board their ships so he can fly them out here, sweet. So, so like the bomb won't kill them. And basically, they say, we don't trust you, fugitive, blah, 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 and basically shoot at him. And they all dead now. And <laughs> good good riddance, bro. Bro, good riddance. So, basically, you know, after that whole entire event, after the island is blown up, basically, Martian Girl's ship, or Megan, her name is, pretty much her ship gets in a blast ratio, but it doesn't get injured, it doesn't get damaged uh, a great amount. And... Pretty much, at this point, pretty much Ben ditched the Crotane ship he upgraded and pretty much blew it up and pretty much flew, or like, pretty much, over the transformed into Ghost Freak as he was flying down towards making ship and phased into it, pretty much transforming back into human form. So, yeah. So, basically, so, basically, after everything, and after Aqua, Aqua, that's whole entire thing, everything happens all up until... Basically, when everybody's saying their goodbyes to everybody after the Jezza League leaves to go to RAN to clear out their names to basically, you know, make themselves innocent. So they go to RAM and they say we will be long as it takes, we'll be gone as long as it takes to clear out our names. Basically saying, well, we will be back soon, little brother, to Superman saying that to Superboy. So basically, they fly off with Green Lantern making a ship for them out of his ring and basically, you know, fly off and now i'm gonna leave it up here guys so i hope you guys enjoyed the video because like and subscribe and also just guys have a blessed day now guys i knew this video i know this video was like super long it's one hour i've never made a one hour long video ever i've never made a one hour long video but this is one of the videos that i actually really like and i hope you guys really like as well now guys if you want a, if you want a part two just go down in the comments and ask because, like, guys, at this point, you should know by now. You're going to ask for anything, and I most likely will do the what if. But, I don't understand why some weirdo in my comments said, make that good gay. Like, who, what? But, yeah. So, basically, I'm going to leave it off here, guys. See you guys later. Bye. As always, guys, have a blessed day. Deuces.